Hi everyone, welcome to my review of Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho in 1960. Um, so yes, back again with Hitchcock and uh, of course the most famous this time, Psycho. We are finally here to review this film and uh, you know I've done a lot of Hitchcock reviews but this one here is on Blu-ray, um, is the most famous, uh, you know, overall the most, you know, uh, loved really um, Hitchcock film, um, you know, it's, it's critically uh, one of the most, you know, respected films and um, just, uh, you know, mass audiences and stuff. Overall, of course, um, you know, I think Psycho is the most uh, popular Hitchcock and uh, the one that he is most famous for. Um, and yes, you know, it's uh, very, very interesting. Of course, just a heads up, uh, it's a spoilers review. Um, so if you've not seen the film, um, you know, definitely be warned. Um, and, uh, you know, I think most people have seen this, um, but certainly um, it's not impossible to go in without um, spoilers, um, you know, and, and watch this film without knowing the twist. So yes, um, even though, you know, the front and everything. But, you know, I think, uh, be warned, of course, and I will we'll say that now. Um, but yes, this film, um, as I say, the most uh, famous Hitchcock film, and uh, I haven't seen this for, you know, around about two years and, and, and four months. Um, so yeah, it's been actually quite a while considering um, I've never really gone that long without watching this film. Purely because actually I've been watching, um, you know, a lot more Hitchcocks for the first time over this sort of two years. Um, you know, like these are like Rope and stuff and uh, Lady Vanishes, ones that I've never seen before. Um, and, you know, really exploring, you know, the set behind me and, and stuff. And yes, you know, re-watching, of course, um, other ones. And, this was one of the first I ever saw, um, you know, first time around when I was younger, when I was a kid. Um, I saw it um, when I was about 10 or 11. Um, I'd seen North and North West before this, and possibly The Birds, I can't quite remember that, but but these were one of the, the first three that I saw from Hitchcock for many, many years until, of course, I actually started going, you know, through his work uh, properly, and uh, I've seen almost 20 now so far, so yes. Um, and, you know, I was going to review this film because... For the next two weeks, um, I'm actually free. I've got a lot of free time, so um, I will be doing a lot of more of my uh, favourite film reviews at times. So yes, expect some uh, some more um, you know films. Quite a lot of them will have high marks, um, and of course, this being one of them, uh, no doubt. And uh, yes, I did actually get talking with uh, one of my fellow YouTubers um, about some Hitchcocks uh, yesterday and stuff. So it actually just um, kind of made me think, you know, I want to watch Psycho, you know, quite quite soon, and I just thought I'd put it in tonight, actually. I was going to watch it maybe in a week or two, within this uh, two weeks or so, uh, but I just thought, I'm really, really in the mood, even more so now, to just watch Psycho, or at least another Hitchcock. And yes, um, for the, you know, more than ten times I've seen this film now, definitely, uh, my most watched Hitchcock film, and um, yes, you know, his, his uh, one of his horror films, um, as well as being a thriller, of course, and, uh, you know, it's... It's a loved film, no doubt, you know, it's, it's one of the most popular, um, and I just, you know, uh, just many memories of watching this uh, for the first time, first few times, really, um, and just, you know, it's, it's always been one of my very, very favourite films, uh, you know, this film, uh, not everyone likes it, but, you know, it is, you know, quite a loved film, and I certainly, uh, you know, absolutely, I am really obsessed with this film, uh, you know, it really, uh, it's, it's one of my very, very, very favourite Hitchcock films, of course, as I usually say, North Point of West is my personal pick um, for the best Hitchcock film. Uh, you know, that is the ultimate one for me, personally, um, with all respect. And I think that's his greatest, and to say is what is his best, you know, it's very, uh, it's a bold statement of any of these, you know, because, uh, you know, it just comes to mind, you know, The Birds, Rear Window, Psycho, of course, Vertigo, you know, all these ones, they're just so good, you know, they're so genius, um, and many, many more, but, you know, I think North and North West is best, but Psycho is one of them ones that's just right near it, I think, you know, along with the birds and Vertigo and stuff, and Rear Window, uh, very, very much on the level in many regards, but, you know, this film, uh, it, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's one of my very, very favourite films, and, uh, you know, just the way, just the comforting feel it has, you know, I think, and, just, you know, f more intense every single time as well, um, but yes. This film, um, we will get into it, and uh, of course, uh, my thoughts on the film. This is my review. Um, so just going into my personal, um, you know, experiences with the film and, and stuff, and just why I love the film so much. Um, you know, I did say um, that this, well, that The Shining. Um, on my review of that, you know, this, uh, that, and another film, you know, is my are my two favorite horrors. Um, and now I can reveal um, in this review that this was the film. I was talking about, and this one is my number one favourite horror film of all time, and uh, yes, from the opening, uh, the opening of course, and 
you know, Hitchcock, um, it was a very troubled production and stuff, and it's very, very low budget, um, and I think that really just adds to the experience. Um, it is it's called a slasher film. I don't personally uh, ever call it a slasher film. I think that's a bit a bit insulting, actually, but, but you know, not necessarily intentionally, but just uh, I don't like to call it a slasher film. It's not, in my opinion, I don't interpret it, you know, as a, you know, as a slasher film, I think, um, and, of course, it has inspired uh, the slasher genre, really, um, in many regards, but I, I don't quite consider it that at all. I think it's just, you know, another Hitchcock film that just so happens to be, um, you know, one of his most darkest films. You know, this is this is very violent, um, you know, in terms of the suggestive nature of the film. It is very, very intense and raw, and uh, as I say, the low budget um, kind of add into that, and, you know, it's a, it's a film with very few locations, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's just... From the very opening, we have, um, of course, um, our main protagonist, of Marion Crane, um, of course, as we believe her to be, you know, the main character in the film at this point. Um, and actually, for the first time when I saw this, I didn't know the spoilers. Um, when I was 10 or 11, I didn't really have um, access to the internet, actually. Um, so, and, and, you know, you can go by without seeing this, but it's a bit harder to um, when you've got, you know, when you're on the internet and stuff quite regularly. But... I didn't know the twist at all, um, and I was told there was twists in the film, um, but, you know, when I first saw it, just, uh, you know, I was shocked to the core, and uh, it instantly just became a film I was in love with, and, um, yeah, just um, from the opening shots, of course, we have our main character, and uh, she was her boyfriend, Sam, and in the hotel, um, you know, and just, you know, just discussing uh, matters here, and, and uh, you know, how the relationship and stuff and um, you know setting the tone here it's very very kind of uh, dreamy feel it has um, Hitchcock does it does this a lot um, you know in his, in his films and um, you know it really is just a, a great great opening scene um, it just lulls you into this and uh, kind of develops the characters uh, very very uh, relaxed ways and uh, then we have this uh, this conversation of course at her work and um, you know she Yes, once again, I just noticed how um, it's almost as if, you know, the character, of course, the client who, who of course, um, you know, gets, you know, trusts her uh, with the 40000 in cash uh, to deposit, of course. And yes, um, it's almost as if he's saying, take the money kind of thing. It's just, it's always a moment that I kind of get, I just, you know, that's a very strange moment. Um, and it's almost as if that is, you know, that is the kind of, um, you know, it's very moralistic, that point. Um, it's just very, it's very strange and kind of uh, quite disturbing, um, you know. And, of course, Marion takes the money for herself and uh, she plans to go off with her boyfriend and, and you know, run away with this money, uh, this 40000 in cash, which, of course, a massive amount, uh, especially then. Um, and, yes, then we have her going, you know, her being pursued um, by the police and stuff. And, uh, you know, it's just... She ends up, of course, just before the half an hour mark at Bates Motel, and this is when the film, of course, um, you know, really does become psycho as we know it. You know, the most famous moments, uh, you know, Norman Bates, of course, his introduction, um, of course, Anthony Perkins, and uh, yeah, one of the greatest uh, villains um, in film, uh, no doubt one of my top ten favourites. He is absolutely just one of the greatest characters in film, and, uh, you know, Marion, of course, gets killed off, as we know, around about the 45 minute mark, you know, in just, uh, you know, a, such a disturbing scene uh, every single time, and especially when, you know, when you've got a Blu-ray and stuff, um, you seeing it on a bigger screen, I've got now, of course, a bigger TV, you know, over the years, you know, I used to have a very small TV and stuff, it just only enhances the experience, um, you know, this is something truly visceral, uh, this scene, of course, very, very tragic, um, and it's, it's genius, you know, it's one of the genius, genius scenes um, in cinema, um, of course, one of the most iconic. Um, you know, this film really is something to behold, and I, I personally think it's just an absolutely perfect film, and, uh, you know, the central um, you know, scene in the film is this, and uh, then the film changes, then we have, um, you know, while I was, I was I was very sympathetic towards Marion, um, and just, you know, I felt sorry for her and stuff, and I, you know, especially when I first saw her, I wanted her, I was thinking, you know, is she going to get away with this and stuff? But no, she does not. Um, she gets brutally killed in um, a suggestive, violent scene. Of course, the scene is edited um, in such a way um, that you are almost attacked um, yourselves as you know, as a viewer, um, by you know the by these, uh, these strikes, you know, of this blade, and uh, combine that with the Bernard Herrmann score at this point, especially. 
and it's almost as if the score, everything is combining here, you know, cinematically to to disturb, to intrude, and uh, the close-ups, uh, the edits, you know, uh, wow, you know, just just uh, many, many edits, uh, cuts, of course, over 70 shots used in the film, in, in this scene. Um, it's just absolutely stunning, it really, really is, and of course, and the, the violins uh, by Herman, you know, it's, it all combines to make one of the greatest scenes of all time, uh, just the way it's edited is just uh, really, really genius. You know, I've never seen anything like this. Um, it really is one of the greatest moments in film. Um, and of course, just once again, I was kind of just, uh, I was just so, so, um, so disturbing, so raw. Um, you know, as I say, it's like you're getting attacked um, by, you're getting attacked cinematically, um, you know, and as if the, the, the higher pitch, you know, the, 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 um, the screeches, you know, are just, you know, even them in themselves are attacking the viewer, and uh, then of course, our main character, as we as we know, falls, um, and she's dead, and uh, you know this. From then on, of course, her her um, her sister Lila, um, of course, played by Vera Miles, the great Vera Miles, wonderful um, as always, and uh, you also have the uh, the boyfriend Sam, um, played by John Gavin, of course, uh, also so enjoyable in this film, um, and then of course. The main characters who try to pursue uh, pursue this and see what's happened, you know, what's happened to to um, her sister, and you know, of course, uh, you know, Sam being the boyfriend um, of you know of our main protagonist, of Marion, uh, played by Janet Lee, and uh, yes, the rest of the film is like an investigation, dramatic irony, of course, um, one of the perfect examples of this, and uh, Norman Bates, um, just you know, you switch just like that. At least I did, obviously. Um, in your sympathy, you know, I start to, you know, I, I just, I, I think I start to sympathise so much with, uh, you know, this character, um, one of the most compelling characters, uh, no question for me, you know, in, in cinema, and um, the performance from Anthony Perkins, um, you know, really is one of the very, very finest, um, easily top 50 for me, performances of all time, I just think it's absolutely masterful, it really, really is, and, you know, we're not going to talk about the sequels and stuff and anything at all. Like this, this is Psycho. This is the original, and uh, any of that is, is, you know, it really doesn't mean anything to me. Um, and uh, yes, you know, within this film, I think um, just one of the greatest characters in film. Uh, this narrative, this switch, of course, this um, this the way the film flips um, straight away like this. Just it's so genius. It's very very bold, um, and you know something that. You know, it, it's, it's, it's just it's so genius, it's so unique, and um, just masterful storytelling throughout. You know, I think um, this character um, is so so disturbing um, at one at some points, but then kind of a, such a charming character, um, a vulnerable character, um, one of course who I sympathise with um, completely. Um, yet I'm also kind of um, you know, of course, he kills off certain characters in the film. Um, you know, and you know, even our main initial main protagonist and uh, it's such a complex uh, you know film this and uh, you know just the way that I I feel so much uh, mixed emotions for this character in particular Norman Bates and uh, the performance is just as I say one of the best um, it's just genius it really really is how we're sympathizing with this villain and uh, of course the twist um, you know the main twist being he plays, you know, both his mother and himself, you know, he pretends his mother is alive still and uh, his split personality, um, you know, that's revealed gradually over the film. Um, like all great twists, like the best uh, reveals, it flips the film when you rewatch it um, and it becomes something even greater, I feel, um, you know, not no uh, knowing this and uh, the dramatic irony, for example, the whole tragedy and the, the just strange and, uh, you know, disturbing nature of this it's just even heightened uh, once you rewatch this, um, knowing what you know what happens, of course, over the course of the film, and knowing that, you know this character um, of Norman Bates um, is, you know, is essentially two different people. Uh, his mother, of course, who was uh, you know in this point of the film, uh, is meant to be dead for ten years, and um, yes, you know, it's just it's one of the most iconic films for a reason. You know, this is genius, genius stuff, and uh, yes. Um, there is comedy in the film, great, great comedy, um, you know, black comedy, of course, um, and uh, just the performance, uh, once again, you know, um, just adding so much charm and comedy to the film, um, you know, vulnerability here he brings to a, you know, a murderer um, here, and it's such a complex film, you know, relating to his split personality as well, there's so much going on here, um, you know, it's a 
very very disturbing but very um you know it's a it's also oddly comfort in this film I, I just love the locations um these these sets of course you know the Bates Motel set uh, being one of the greatest in film and yes this is uh you know kind of a, a self-financed uh, project by Hitchcock um things didn't come about at first um and then he went ahead and kind of um done this and produced this finance him, himself and uh yes now we have Psycho one of the best films ever made um you know I, I it's just uh, something else, and I don't automatically think, um, personally actually, um, most people would, um, I don't automatically think of Psycho when I think Hitchcock, um, but it's certainly one of the ones, one of the films that I really do, you know, uh, place um, with with the name Hitchcock, um, because I, I would maybe, if someone said um, Alfred Hitchcock, I would, I would think, you know, Jimmy Stewart actually, you know, just the collaboration, Cary Grant, um, you know, I would, I would think, I would think Rear Window, North North West, really, I think represent him the most, uh, just in many ways, uh, and Vertigo, maybe, maybe not so much, but, but yeah, these sort of films, um, you know, a bit more maybe, or at least on similar grounds to um, Psycho, um, but yes, you know, and The Lady Vanishes, and Rope, um, they just define Hitchcock um, just as much, really, to me, and it's, it's very strange, yes, I, I don't automatically think Psycho, you know, above every other uh, Hitchcock kind of film uh, or collaboration and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's certainly um, one of his, his kind of, um, and the things I think of, of course, when I, when I think Hitchcock, but just not, not quite the number one. It's not quite my favorite, um, but as I say, um, as I've said, it's very, very close. It's one of his um, absolute finest films. And uh, yes, yeah, just, it's very, just, um, it's something to, to really marvel at, you know, the fact that this is, Really, it's his most popular film, most famous, and um, you know it's quite far into his filmography. Of course, uh, as we know, if you've explored his work, you know it began in the twenties, um, and of course, he made masterpieces in the thirties, forties, fifties, being his for me his finest decade. And then he comes out with this, you know, um, so many years into his career, and um, you know just defining so many um, decades here of cinema and uh, what many regard as his best film. Um, it's something. It's always something, you know, when this happens with a director, uh, maybe Stanley Kubrick, for example, or Spielberg, or, you know, when they, they can just uh, top themselves, um, you know, in many regards. And, you know, this really is, for me, one of his finest uh, works. Um, and it's just, it's just stunning. I, I just love every single act. Um, you know, the opening act, of course, being so, um, so genius, so um, peaceful at times. But, wow, this is on edge, um, you know, of course. When... Marion is uh, just driving, uh, and of course she's been followed, um, pursued by this, you know, this this cop, uh, this policeman. Um, there is something so um, uneasy about this sequence, you know. Fear, you know, that is what horror films stem from, um, you know. And this is, you know, it's partly as as widely known, um, and Hitchcock has talked about, you know, his kind of his fear from very young age of, you know, police and the law. And uh, yes, you know, this is so evident in this film. Uh, the framing, uh, for example, of the, uh, you know, that main policeman at the beginning who is following Marion, um, and I think the way his glasses, you know, just um, add to this, the sunglasses here, and just the way he is framed very, very intensely, you know, an extreme uh, shot here whenever he, you know, when he peers into the car, that I'm just, I'm actually, uh, you know, kind of taken aback um, every time, you know, this, this shot occurs, and... Uh, just the reaction shots, of course, uh, just so uneasy, it gets under your skin, um, this fear. And the genius thing is, you think um, that, you know, it's uh, like you're going to this motel, which is, you know, it's kind of comforting at first, although so eerie, you know, atmospheric, and uh, the, the weather in this film, the use of weather, um, you know. Another thing that is just genius, um, classic, classic cinema here, you know, classic Hitchcock, um, and the use of weather, of course, the rain, just wow, you know, just after that tense, tense sequence, um, or various sequences here, you know, where the tension is rising, um, she's on the run, um, Hitchcock would do this, you know, um, individuals on the run, you know, it'd be a quite, you know, an occurrence uh, throughout his filmography, and, um, you know, usually quite comedic um, in this film, um, certainly not comedic, um, this is definitely a contender for his darkest film, and, and the more I see it, the more I kind of feel that, actually, um, Maybe even more so than Vertigo, um, I have to think on that, but yes, you know, you know, she goes to this motel and you think this is kind of like for her respite, you know, comfort, a uh, way she can relax, um, but wow, you know, you're wrong if you think that, because of course, this is when she meets her end, and it's just so genius to do that, and um, 
you know, you get these such engaging dialogue scenes between her and Norman uh, you know, just before the shower scene, um, you know, and it really starts to, to make you feel, wow, you know, this, this character, something about this guy. Um, and then, of course, it hits you, you know, he kills her um, brutally. And it's just such a psychologically, you know, affecting experience. Um, you know, in many regards, this is one of the most, you know, the greatest, um, you know, uses of violence, uh, you know, in a film. But it's all within the mind, you know, you, as I say, you know, even the shower scene, you don't, you know, it's not, it's not, you know, like a lot of films, horror films, it, it's completely different um, and, and much better um, for me, you know, it's a, it's a real uh, getting you in, um, you know, this, this mindset and actually psychologically uh, attacking, you know, and uh, very, very violent, uh, but psychologically and through, through cuts and uh, angles and, uh, reactions and uh, feeling you know it's really really such a genius film uh, in the way that it, it portrays violence and um, you know it does it does it in a way that's not cheap in the slightest um, this is all um, so 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 masterfully done here with the the most um, you know real real patience as well you know it, it takes its time to build up the film and, and kind of you know reveal motivations and stuff of characters get you in the mind of them and you know, just the way it does also um, really, you know, portray violence in such a, such a way that just in the mindset of, of so much, it's so psychologically, um, you know, affecting this film to me. Um, and just like so many Hitchcock films, you know, I feel. And uh, yeah, it's just um, a real bold film, this. Um, one of the, the most, in many regards, most violent films in, in the way that it can actually really, really mean something. And, uh, you know, it actually... Be done in such a way that is is cinematic, you know, cinematic violence uh, in the way that it, you know, it should be done uh, a lot more often, um, and it's not the case, um, sadly, you know, a lot of cheap, uh, cheap films at times, um, not in regards to violence, it's always cheap, but yeah, it's, uh, films should really, really um, kind of uh, look to this um, for for maybe um, some guidance at times because I just think. The way that uh, you know Hitchcock uh, does this is truly beyond uh, you know most films, and um, wow, it's just such a you know this film is just greater and greater every time I see it. And um, as I say, just the way that this really is so uh, such a, a psychological film, it really, really is. It just, to call it a slasher film, you know, I, I don't I personally. Um, that's why I never call it a slasher film. It's not like that, you know. It really is um, completely felt and uh, you know it's really um, so sophisticated in its, um, its editing so precise but so so um, you know chaotic at times you know in the editing and just for all for effect um, you know and uh, whether it's an extreme close-up um, or you know many other different you know uses uh, of, of angles um, you know and edits you know I think it's all um, for an effect that just achieved something so pure and, uh, and and so disturbing you know horror films they're meant to scare you they're meant to disturb you and this film certainly um, achieves that just uh, as I say one of the greatest scenes of all time the shower scene um, but then you've got 10 minutes at least of, of him clearing this up and it's so engaging this sequence um, of him just mopping up the blood and etc and disposing of the body um, there we see details um, once again you know in Hitchcock films here we see different things, um, you know, and when you see that reveal where, you know, the newspaper and inside the money has been put into the car and then, of course, he puts it in the swamp. Um, that's a moment that really defines the film for me, you know, the way that this this individual, this, um, you know, villain, this killer, um, whatever you want to call him, of course, um, I think, I think although he does not know that the money is there, it kind of just represents um, the film and the way that it's not about this. It's... He is someone who doesn't think about these kind of things. He is just, um, you know, it's just such a complex villain, you know. It's uh, and of course it just completely throws away any sort of kind of um, things we thought, you know, about the first um, act of the film and the the value of you know that that whole thing that started the film is you know this woman on the run um, with money, you know, this large sum of money which uh, kickstarts the film. Uh, but then of course. That is completely um, thrown away, and then, then from then on, we have one of the finest, uh, you know, purest, uh, most powerful uh, for me character studies in film. You know, I'm brought brought to tears at moments in this film, uh, just about how 
how tragic it is and how you know just how moving and human this film is with Norman Bates and uh, you know just the whole tragedy around this uh, this one you know kind of small location here and uh, gradually over the film you know you get more exposition and um, you know it reveals more about this kind of this location and uh, Norman Bates of course the backstory to, to his um, his life and uh, wow you know it just conflicting at times of you know what he is um, giving off you know in terms of his body language and uh, what he's saying of course you know he's um, it's such a compelling film you know it's one of the, the most engaging films and you know the cinematography um, in this film just the overall visual storytelling um, it's something to truly behold um, you know you've got you've just got one of the best um, you know shot films of all time you know the budget you know the low budget you know adds to the experience as I say at times but you know you don't feel um, that this compromises the way that Hitchcock um, you know tells his story visually um, you really do not you know this is one of the most masterfully shot films um, of all time you know it's just just genius um, every single zoom or you know tracking shot you know the use of um, I think the framing of course overall but the, the close-ups combined with the the way, of course, for example, he reveals, uh, you know, he shows the motel first, uh, or the, you know, the house, um, actually, you know, on the hill slightly there, you know, slightly, you know, very far back at first. Um, you don't see this house really up close um, for quite a bit, you know, and it just adds to the mystery of this, you know, the, the way that he builds this up, the suspense, um, you know, he reveals the information gradually over the film, and um, the, this film is really, really mythic, uh, it really, really is, it just... It's one of the great um, mythic films, you know, mysteries, um, because, yeah, it's just, I think, the way this, the atmosphere of this film in general, and, uh, you know, the way that these, these visual moments just um, stay ingrained in your mind, you know, and I just think everything that, you know, at his uh, disposal here, he used, and he, he'd done this perfectly, um, and I think just, just uh, all the close-ups, the cutting, of course, tying into everything, but the, um, just every single shot in the film, whether it's a long shot or an extreme close up, you know, all these kind of um, techniques, you know, these these angles, these offbeat angles. Um, one moment that always gets me is the, um, this 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 very strange and just haunting shot actually, you know, quite quite far into the film, um, you know, just after another event, another death, um, really. And uh, it's of Norman standing by the swamp, um, just he slowly looks around, um, you know, our way kind of thing. And, just slowly going in, moving in, uh, you know, shot here, moving into this character. It's one of the most, uh, just, I think, just uh, affecting shots, just so powerful and just kind of, wow, awe-inspiring. Some It's just a personal uh, moment for me, like, just, wow, you know, it's always something that gets me, something I always just, just, yeah, I'm in awe of, really, um, you know, and he just looks around, it's like, the lighting in the film is so amazing, it's so epic, um, you know, just the way slight shadows on his face it's, he is such a disturbing character at times but then he's very funny and uh, innocent seeming uh, at times wow what a film and um, the visual storytelling you know Hitchcock was just in general um, someone who really at times more than anyone really uh, maybe not Kubrick and Spielberg but someone who just knew how to you know get across a certain idea um, just in general to the audience uh, through simplicity, you know, visual storytelling here, you know, he really knew how to kind of uh, go back to or just continue, you know, silent era uh, films, you know, what is um, some of the most important film uh, things in cinema is just to to um, to use pure cinematics and he really, you know, a lot of his films acted like silent pictures, um, you know, I just love this, I appreciate this so much, um, I really just love the way there's a simplicity at times with the way he reveals information, um, the way he certain shots and uh, juxtaposition of shots and, and you know just uh, reactions and everything the pure purity of cinema here pure cinematics create a mood um, a feeling um, they, they they create an idea in our mind um, as a viewer and um, you know this is one of the films that really represent that the most um, you know in all of his films rear window is kind of just a a kind of um, definition of that you could say and just definition of pure cinematics in general, um, but you know, this is one of his uh, films that really um, just represent this the most, uh, the best, in its purest way, and uh, I just think the themes in this film, the way it portrays paranoia, um, you know, of the different characters in a film, obsession at times, and 
guilt uh, as well. It's quite, you know, morals really come into the film quite a lot. Um, but it's not a judgmental film. Uh, this is what I really love as well. Um, it's a film where you're just, you know, offered these characters, um, you know, on screen and you don't... Hitchcock never really, um, through, through all the techniques, he never... Um, it's never a film that's completely one-sided or anything. Um, it's just a human film. Um, you know, it's not... It's not, uh, as I say, it's not a slasher film to me. It's not a, a kind of... In many regards, it isn't really... It's not quite a horror film, but it, you know, it is. But it's uh, it's something completely... You know, I've, I've never seen a film like this. You know, it's so unique and, and uh, you know, yeah, it's just so complex and, and human and um, it's just so balanced. Um, it doesn't... It does something completely, you know, genius in so many ways and what it's doing with its characters in these shifts, in the, you know, maybe connection at times to different characters, uh, what I feel for the characters, who I'm, you know, kind of uh, behind. And so it's just so, uh, so complex, this film. And uh, it's not, as I say, it's not one-sided at all. It's just completely um, so well-balanced. You know, you've got, I love the, the team-up as well, um, actually, um, just over halfway through the characters, Lila and uh, Sam, you know, I love this whole kind of, this team up um, actually, and how they are kind of coming together to to um, find out, you know, investigate, um, and the dramatic irony, of course, just adds to the the tension of the, um, in the film. Uh, as you rewatch, of course, um, even more so. And uh, yeah, it's just um, you know, it's such a, an enjoyable film. It's such a charming film. The flow of the picture, um, wow, it's just it's just um, one of these films directed to perfection uh, for me. And of course. We'll address quickly just for the record the scene um, just before the final uh, shots, two shots really, um, you know, where you've got the, yeah, you've got this kind of uh, five or so minutes uh, kind of scene of, of, you know, exposition and stuff, the psychologist uh, scene, and uh, you've got explaining what's happened uh, basically um, to some of the the family members and stuff and other people in, in that room. And I actually love this scene. Um, never quite, you know, it's fine, everyone has their opinion, but I don't. I don't see how this is criticised so much. Um, I love this scene. I really do for, for you know, everyone of the opinion. But I personally love the scene. I think it's actually really so good, and it's kind of like a comfort just after you've been shocked so much. But then you've got the just after that, the one of the most haunting moments I ever experienced, which we'll get to. And uh, then you've yes, this whole scene, you know, it's just kind of um, it's not necessarily to us as an audience explaining it's these characters because of course, uh, rightfully so, what's happened is. One of the most strangest things, um, you know, of course, for for anyone to experience. Uh, yes, the viewer, we have had, um, you know, especially when you rewatch it, we've had the time to kind of um, process what's happened. Um, you know, it's, what an odd experience it must have been, you know, for these characters. Um, but yes, you know, we've had more time over the course of the film, um, you know, to, to process what has happened. And of course, we are aware, you know, in many regards, but... You know, it's, it's to these characters, I feel, um, it feels like to me, and just the way I love how, yeah, it's so kind of, um, they're kind of so shocked at everything, and uh, I just love this scene, it's just so, so great, it's not necessarily, um, I think, you know, I don't think it's, uh, it's uh, on the nose or anything, I don't think that at all, I just think it's a great, great scene that I love, and um, I finally, final wrap up um, with these characters and stuff, and yeah, I just, I don't, I don't uh, personally uh, think that's a scene that, you know, it's flawed. I, I think the whole film's perfect, including the scene. I love this. I really do. And I think it's definitely, um, you know, something I love just before the, yes, the ending uh, shots here. When we have, um, for me, one of the greatest um, endings in a film, um, you know, this um, this uh, this kind of narration here at the last moments, uh, you know, and of course you've got this, this, this one of the greatest lines in cinema. And of course that, that um overlapping of, of you know with the skull slightly in there you know you can slightly see when Norman's face and, and that smile that devilish uh you know haunting disturbing smile gets me every time I'm just very disturbed by this film and then you've got the, yeah as I say the slight uh you can see the skull um within him basically so it's, it's like the two characters as one um it's wow so effective there and then of course you've got the swamp the end, um, just uh, perfect for me, cinematic perfection. You know, it's just such a, a meaningful experience, this film, and it's, it's so, you know, it's so visceral, of course, um, so affecting, uh, raw, and kind of, yes, gritty at times, and everything, and, and really, really scary, this film. This is so scary, disturbing, the more you think about this, 
psychological film this uh, but it, yeah it's so spiritual um, it really really is and just in so many cases here and um, you know the ending of course I, I really I think of uh, the most when I say that but yeah just the way um, as well you know we're kind of we're really feeling these characters uh, you know for the choices they make but again there's so much empathy um, to, to you know, characters like Marion uh, and so much you know you feel for these characters it's so kind of uh, sincere, you know, that's a really interesting thing about the film. It's so sincere, you know, Hitchcock obviously loved to, um, you know, kind of play with the audience and trying to, you know, kind of make them suffer, um, you know, but then of course come out, you know, kind of elated and stuff, as you would say, like a, a roller coaster, you know, for example. Um, but, you know, he really, this is one of his most sincere pictures, I feel, um, just constantly, never judgmental, you know, never one-sided this film, um, you know, for example, with Marion and just, the way that she makes different choices, you know, of course, and a flawed character, um, and, you know, but she, do, you do, you know, you do connect, at least I, I connect to her, I feel different things for her, and, and kind of uh, empathy, sympathy, whatever, you know, and it, it does this with so many of the characters, uh, you know, in the film, uh, but, you know, just how scary this is as well, as I've said, you know, uh, Norman Bates being uh, just so, so chilling, um, you know, but the difference, of course, being that he's also very, very, um, you know, kind of innocent looking at times and the way it portrays isolation um, really is genius, uh, wonderful, you know, this is how to describe it. At the end of everything, you know, that I've said, you know, just a wonderful, wonderful film, um, beautiful filmmaking, um, you know, and how human it is and how, yes, yeah, just uh, complex and um, sincere, you know, it's just a wonderful film, really, really is. And, think um you know the way i feel so sorry for this character of norman uh it's just one one of the many striking things about the film about the picture um and yes just um it really elevates this film it goes to a spiritual level that many many films can't quite do i, I think this is right up there at the heights of cinema um and you know it just um is saying something for it to be you know contender for the best hitchcock or at least you know in his top five you know at this point in his he had made so many masterpieces, in my opinion, so many great films. Um, just the list could, you know, goes on for so long. I think actually he's made the most masterpieces uh, by number um, that I have seen of any director. Um, but yeah, this is just such a, while it's a visceral and raw and um, kind of, you know, really, really affecting experience, I think it's just a spiritual film as well. You know, it really um, has a perfect combination of, so many elements here to, to achieve this level, um, the way it elevates to a certain purity and uh, just real genius and a uh, sense of wonder and, and uh, mythic qualities here, you know, it's just absolutely staggering um, and it's why Psycho is really one of my, my, you know, the films I hold in the highest regard and, uh, you know, care for the most and, and I'm just, I'm moved in, not just, you know, maybe not as sad or tragic as some films but you know just in just uh in many different emotions the way i moved more than most films and certainly well into my top 50 um top 40 films um of all time i love this film um just uh, i could go on and on but wow you know this film is just it's perfect to me it's uh it, once again um you know genius film with a uh, perfect exploration of different themes you know the, just this general feeling of fear throughout the film which is what horror films, you know, stem from, um, just an idea that's, uh, you know, it's in our mind, or, you know, and a certain thing, you know, fear, you know, it taps into this paranoia, it's um, all these characters, you know, in many regards, he did make quite a few, you know, horror films, or at least uh, films that act as horrors as well as thrillers, and, you know, you can kind of uh, cross over the two different genres, but yeah, you know, this is uh, it's one that really, once again, it, it does uh, explore some of his usual kind of stuff, but very unique within his filmography, and I, I, you know, I, I struggled to find one, one much more that, you know, darker than this. You know, this isn't, you know, a family uh, kind of Hitchcock film one that you can participate in in the way I think that you can you can with uh, Rear Window or, you know, something or North One of the West. It's very, very dark, um, very disturbing film and um, it's just uh, it's so affecting and uh, disturbing. Yeah, violent um, in, in many different regards. Um, it's a real attack at times, um, visceral visceral feeling here you know with many of the moments in the film many of the shots and this slow um reveal of this um this character this character study um the main one being norman bates here 
is uh, is, is something else. It's masterful. It's genius. Um, it really, really is one of one of the great, great uh, events in cinema. Hitchcock knew how to um, take the sometimes simplest of ideas. Um, Rear Window being a classic example of that, you know, and just make it one of the the big big um, events of cinema and um, this is one of them one of the cases here for um, just um, this being one of the big events from the the uh, the films really for me um, that represent you know why I love uh, one of the reasons uh, why I love cinema um, what cinema can do um, just even with a small budget as well you know and um, for me the greatest horror film ever made um, even surpassing the shining and um, the birds Yes, I, I do think Psycho is the best. Um, it edges out The Shining um, just a bit, but yes, certainly does for me. And just, just my 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 investment to the film, my my how I'm thrilled, I am you know disturbed. Um, but it's it's comedy in there at times. There's uh, there's so much humanity in the film. Uh, it's so complex, and uh, I just want to kind of you watch this again and again. You know the details that are in this, and pick up on more um, stuff and. Yeah, it's just uh, it's some film really, this um, absolutely one of the, the most stunning films of all time uh, for me. The music, of course. And I think that Bernard Herrmann, um, if you're interested, the score for this, um, I think in the way it's used and just um, listening to this and stuff and how effective it is, it's one of his, one of his top three for me. Um, I think Vertigo and uh, North and North West and stuff, yeah, I think they're... They're on this level, on the level of this, but um, I do I count this as you know better than um, quite a lot of his scores, even Taxi Driver, which is a uh, sublime, uh, sublime piece of work there. But yeah, Psycho is one of his um, very, very best for me, best free. Um, really, this is just stunning. Um, it's uh, it's you know it's really uh, chilling. The score, uh, it's very um, shocking in itself. The sound, the score of this, and. You know, the violins, just uh, the way they're used in the film, uh, you know, the shower scene, for example, but it has also got this kind of beautiful moment, you know, within the score, and I love this as well. You know, it's one of my very, very favourite, um, just scores in general, and certainly horror scores, and uh, yeah, just uh, absolutely stunning, um, adds to the film. It works in harmony with the film, like great, uh, great films do, um, you know, it's operatic, this, and um, just uh, never a single moment um, where it doesn't, it doesn't fully, you know, invest me. You know, this film is just um, one of the finest. Um, the characters, the the uh, the unraveling of events, the uh, how thrilling this film is. You know, it just moves so wonderfully. Um, the flow of the film, and just um, it's so dark. This film, honestly, it really, really is. But um, it's such a comfort watch. Um, I think I would recommend personally, um, you know, to to watch. This um, on a rainy day um, or night, which it is tonight, and uh, or you know, kind of uh, it seems when I've watched it, you know, just that when the sun is setting, um, it, yeah, just um, just uh, just a thing with me, you know, personally, I I love um, especially watching it, you know, these sort of you know environments, especially you know when there is rain, it just adds so much to the, the experience. Um, and as I say, the weather in the film, the way it's used, uh, the great atmosphere and mood, um, just stunning, it really, really is, and. Yes, Psycho, um, wow, wow, this really is a stunning film, um, an opus, a real opus of the magnum variety, and uh, yes, there we have it, you know, this is just like The Birds, just like Vertigo, Rear Window, North and West, um, a film that gets my highest rating, my absolute highest rating I have to give to a film, um, of 100% plus, TRS, um, this is one of my favourite 50 films of all time, no doubt. Uh, this is, for me, the finest horror film ever made, um, just personally. Um, and I think, it's, yeah, it's great horrors. There's so many, you know, great horrors, of course, that can you can say is your favourite, but this is my personal favourite, um, actually, even surpassing, you know, a horror made by my, you know, favourite director, um, you know, Stanley Kubrick, and uh, that is The Shining, of course. I think this is even greater, um, personally, and I just think it's uh, it's one of the best ones ever made. Um, what this does, you know, with uh, with location, uh, with with uh, you know pure cinematics, uh, with you know just how how to make a film your own way, and uh, you know these these this character study, one of the most enthralling and uh, powerful and affecting uh, studies in cinema, and. Uh, Yes, just the overall, uh, the characters, um, all the characters, you know, in this film and how I feel different things. 
the way I'm affected um, by the, the score, you know, and the, the way it's edited, the film, it's just, you know, it really uh, stirs up so much emotions, um, really, really does. It's one of the most, um, you know, affecting films. Uh, it's just cinematic perfection in every single sense, and um, I, I just love this film so much. The, the warmth of it, you know, the heart of it, you know, and the... the you know, the way it's so uh, complex and human, this film, and how, you know, it just, it's uh, so many things that I love about cinema, um, all rolled into this one, one film by one of the masters for me, um, not his, not quite, not quite his best film, but, but very, very close, um, that's all I'm going to say, I'm not going to say if it's my fifth favourite, or my second, or third, or fourth, um, you'll have to find out on the ranking, um, but, it, you know, it is in my top five, the ones I mentioned, and awarded the, the highest mark to as well, like the birds and stuff, and Vertigo, but yeah, this is one of the one of the best, um, just behind North and Off West, as, you know, in this, in this top five for me, um, just, uh, it means so much to me as a film, and how it just, um, you know, inspires me, and how much I, I, you know, I have a real affection for this film, and uh, yeah, I just love every single second, um, Janet Lee is just so wonderful in this film, she is great, um, the performances across the board. Vera Miles is so good. Um, just as you know, she is maybe in the Searchers as well. Just uh, portrays you know a character um, who is kind of really, really strong and, and kind of um, not giving up on you know like someone who wants to go ahead with what, you know certain things in the film. And yeah, she drives. She's one of the driving forces of the the second half of the film. And I just think this whole world, you know, it's kind of uh, set up. This uh, this whole kind of universe within this film it's just um this is just absolutely stunning it's a it's a real mythic film this um has such a kind of a feeling and atmosphere um that just um elevates to the highest um legends you know in you know as a as a as a piece of cinema it's one of the most legendary um just mythic films you know real real uh stunning work here and how you know i'm kind of just uh, feeling so much emotions, um, you know, it just offers so much tension, um, sustained, uh, mastered tension, um, you know, and it's just, just uh, such a great choice to have this in black and white. Wow, you know, it's just wonderful. Um, the shadows in the film, which just are so effective um, in portraying the mood or, you know, revealing different moments within the characters, Norman Bates, the way he's portrayed throughout the film and his kind of um, many different, um, you know, kind of, well, yes, the many emotions that you feel at times, so much um, variety within his uh, character, and um, I just think it's uh, it's uh, it's one of the best films ever made, as I've said, and um, yes, just, wow, what a film, what a stunning work, um, wow, and uh, yes, just just the, the themes, you know, the paranoia that is uh, imbued in this film, and um, the, the way the film is shot, uh, as I say, the the visual moments, um, pure cinematics here, and the editing, the cutting in general, just, wow, this is genius, how you make a film, and uh, the way, of course, the the um, the score is used, and how it, you know, kind of attacks us, just, you know, that shower scene is pivotal to the to the whole film, you know, wow, what a scene, um, what a sequence, um, genius, genius film this, and yes, I'm sure many people um, love the film, and uh, it'd be great to talk about this, in the comments and uh, your Hitchcock rankings or you know top 10 at least there is 52 films that you know that, um, we, we have I would eventually uh, rank um, you know I'll eventually be doing um, in the ranking but yes you know maybe your favorite Hitchcock films and um, you know discussions on Psycho of course um, yeah just a one that I am constantly obsessed with and um, just um, affected by so much have such a comfort for as well and a love and a, an affection for the film and it's just one of the most um you know stunning films of all time mind-blowing this and uh, wow just gently reels you in here <laughs> wow really does um gradually unfold and um just from the very opening bits you know uh with the the, the kind of um wow that moment just again you know when the the early moment when the the uh, the client, you know, it's kind of just such a great scene um, when he, you know, it's kind of like he's he's tempting her to take that money. It's so it's so strange that moment, and of course, her employer when he's crossing the road and he sees her in the car. Um, wow, you know, from then, even then moments they're so tense, they're so uh, fueled with paranoia and fear, um, and that's what great horror films, you know, originate from. Um, 
a sense of fear, fear of something. And, uh, you know, it's just, wow, what a film. One of the great character studies, um, one of the great, great, great films. My favourite horror film of all time, personally, and uh, an absolute cinematic masterpiece, uh, magnum opus from start to finish. Um, this is one of the very, very finest films, one of the very best Hitchcocks. And, um, yes, just absolutely um a perfect film for me and uh yes as always thanks for watching my review